France has something of a cursed history when it comes to Formula 1 racing. Since the start of the World Championship in 1950, it has only produced one World Champion and a handful of Grand Prix winners. All too often, its brightest prospects were snatched away before they could fulfil their potential. One such story is that of François Servet, a Parisian son of a French resistance fighter and only the second Frenchman ever to win a Grand Prix. Servet was at the point of staking his claim to the World Championship when he was killed in one of the unthinkably horrible accidents which claimed so many drivers' lives in the 1970s. Severe had been a motorcycle racer in his teens and, inspired by his sister's boyfriend, French racer Jean-Pierre Beltois, made the switch to cars, winning the prestigious Volant Shell Prize at the famous Winfield Racing School in 1966. That same scholarship, later renamed Volant Elf after a change in sponsor, also launched the careers of Patrick Tombe, Didier Peroni, René Arnoux and Alain Prost. The prize was a Formula 3 Alpine car, with which Servé started his racing career. And, after a season of learning about the intricacies of car setup and racecraft, Servé clinched the French Formula 3 championship in just his second season. Severe moved up to Formula 2 in 1969, and it was this move which was to lead to his break into Formula 1. In the 60s, it was still common for Grand Prix drivers to take part in Formula 2 races, usually in a bid to boost their earnings, as Formula 1 didn't actually pay very well at the time. Jackie Stewart, on the way to winning his first world championship, came across Severe in two Formula 2 races, first at Rems and then at Crystal Palace. He was impressed with what he saw and mentioned to his Formula 1 team boss Ken Tyrrell that the young Frenchman was someone to watch out for in the future. There's actually an interesting conflict of opinions here. As Stewart has always said that Ken Tyrrell had asked him to keep an eye on Sever as a prospect during their Formula 2 races, whilst Tyrrell always said that it was Stewart who put Sever on his radar. At the time, Tyrrell was sponsored by Elf, and having a French driver in the car was politically and financially expedient for the team. To that end, for 1970, Tyrrell had signed the promising Johnny Servers Gavin who had impressed with occasional drives for the Matra team, including taking pole position and leading the race on his debut at the Monaco Grand Prix in 1967. However, during the winter of 1969-70, Servers Gavin took part in a cross-country rally in an open-top jeep and suffered a serious eye injury when he struck a branch in one of the cross-country sections. The injury meant that he missed most of winter testing and had a disappointing start to the season, culminating in an accident during qualifying for the Monaco Grand Prix. This prompted him to take the decision to retire on the spot. His accident at the chicane was eerily similar to the one which killed Lorenzo Bandini. And Servo Gavin, unsure about the quality of the vision in his injured eye, decided the risks of Formula 1 were no longer worth the returns and retired not just from Formula 1 but from racing and modern life entirely, spending the next years wandering the south of France in a horse-drawn gypsy caravan. This left Tyrrell with a problem. Three races into the 1970 season, he had lost his sponsor-driven French driver and needed a replacement. Which led him to take up Stewart's advice and high Severe for the balance of the season. 
Severe made his debut at the Dutch Grand Prix, where the general opinion was that he was in the seat purely because he was Elf's favoured driver. Many felt that Severe was out of his depth, struggling in the initial practice sessions, until Stewart took some time in the Saturday morning qualifying session to guide the younger man around the circuit and helped him improve his times by more than two seconds a lap. This was the beginning of the relationship between Stuart and Severe, almost like a master craftsman and his young apprentice. For the remainder of his racing career, Severe learned from Stuart at every opportunity, and the two became extremely close. For his debut, Severe eventually qualified 15th. The race itself was won by Jochen Rint, and another debutant, Clay Regazzoni, took most of the attention after qualifying sixth and finishing fourth. But the race was marred by the death of Piers Courage, who crashed his magnesium-bodied car on lap 23. It overturned, burst into flame, and set the scrub grass around the wreck alight. Magnesium burns ferociously and is difficult to extinguish, so there was no hope of rescue, especially given the poor standard of firefighting equipment at the circuit at the time. Courage was left in the burnt-out wreck for the remainder of the race, with many drivers aware that they were racing past the body of one of their friends and colleagues for the last 57 laps of the race. 1970 was very much a learning season for Severe, but he scored his first points finish at the Italian Grand Prix that year, converting 11th place on the grid to a 6th place finish. Once again, the race was marred by tragedy, as world championship leader Jochen Rindt was killed when a brake shaft failed on his Lotus, pitching him into the barriers at Parabolica at more than 180 miles per hour. Rint's championship lead was sufficient for him to win the world championship, even though he obviously took no part in the last four races of the season. For 1971, Severe continued to learn and improve under Stewart's tutelage, and despite some misfortune with mechanical problems, scored podiums in France, Germany and Italy, before clinching his first Grand Prix victory at Watkins Glen. There was rather more to that win than meets the eye. The heat at Watkins Glen on race day meant that drivers were faced with a difficult choice between soft tyres, which were faster but marginal for wear, or hard tyres, which would definitely last the race. Most chose to take the side of risk and ran on the soft tyres. From the start, both Denny Hume and Francois Servaire jumped Palmer and Jackie Stewart into the first corner. But before the end of the lap, Severe overtook Hume and positioned his car in such a way as to allow Stewart to pass both. The newly crowned double world champion took the lead, but didn't disappear into the distance. Stewart had been imperious all season, winning six races, so it was something of a surprise to see him being held by his young teammate. By lap 14, Stewart waved his protégé through into the lead. Severe had done a much better job of looking after his tyres in the opening stages of the race, and Stewart realised that he was in tyre trouble and made things easy for his teammate. Stewart then played the team game. Driving defensively to delay Jackie Eakes' Ferrari, allowing Severe to build a lead. Ix eventually passed Stewart, but Severe had opened a six-second gap by the time he did, one which he would maintain until midway through the race, when he started to suffer from the same tyre wear issues which had slowed Stewart. Ix put the hammer down in pursuit of the Tyrrell, his Firestone tyres holding up much better than the good years on the two Tyrrells. But before he could catch Severe, the alternator of his Ferrari dislodged, cracking the gearbox and spilling all its oil onto the track. 
causing Denny Hume to crash and nearly eliminating Sever as he left the road after finding the oil a lap later. Disaster avoided, Sever pulled out a comfortable margin to win his first Grand Prix by more than 40 seconds. And in doing so, clinched third place in the World Championship in his first full season of Grand Prix racing. The Tyrrell had been the dominant car, and Stewart had taken time to help Sever improve his racing skills. But even so, this had been an impressive effort from a young man in only his fifth year of racing any sort of car. The way that Stuart and Sever had helped each other at Watkins Glen showed the strength of the relationship which had already built between them. 1972 promised much but delivered little. Stuart took three wins but lost out on the championship to Emerson Fittipaldi. For Sever it was a frustrating season of mechanical problems, with second places in Belgium and Watkins Glen the only high points. 1973 started much better, Sever clinching second place at the season opener in Argentina, ahead of teammate Stewart. It was the first of six second places Sever achieved through the season, including a stunning recovery drive at Spain's Monjuic Park after a pit stop to replace a punctured tyre dropped him to the back of the field. And another in Belgium, after having thrown away the lead with a spin, which had dropped him back to 8th place. Coming to the final race of the season at Watkins Glen, Stewart clinched the World Championship, and Sever was in 3rd place, with an outside chance of stealing 2nd place from Emerson Fittipaldi, if the result went his way on race day. Sadly, Sever was not destined to make it to race day. The story of Francois Sever somewhat mirrors the plot of the 1966 film Grand Prix by John Frankenheimer. In the film, a racing legend and his younger playboy teammate bond, whilst a love story plays around the veteran racer and his mistress. Sever revered Stuart. And in turn, Stuart and his wife Helen saw him as a member of their family. Indeed, in the weeks before Watkins Glen, they had all holidayed together. Stuart once said he saw Francois like a little brother and as his best friend. Sever certainly fit the film role of a playboy in real life. He was rich, talented, incredibly good looking with blue eyes which sent the girls wild, and he could get away with fashion that would have been ridiculous on other men. He dated the most glamorous women of the era, and he charmed all those he met. In the film, it is the veteran who dies in the climactic final race. At Watkins Glen, it was the protégé, and his death was to be one of the most brutal in the history of Formula One. Tyrrell had entered a third car for New Zealander Chris Amon in the season finale, and the Kiwi said he found the car extremely twitchy around the circuit. In order to quell the twitchiness in the most difficult part of the lap, the uphill S's. Both Amon and Stewart were using fourth gear, giving up some performance in exchange for stability through this extremely fast and tricky section of the circuit. Sever was using third gear which meant he was lapping faster than his teammates, but exacerbated the twitchiness of the car in exchange. Coincidentally, a documentary was being filmed at the race weekend, and one of the conversations filmed was of Stuart and Sever discussing which gear to use through the S's. Stuart asked Sever, if you gear the car for third gear through the S's, where else will you use it? It is chilling footage to watch when you know what was to happen shortly afterwards. Helen Stewart attended races with Jackie and, along with timekeeping, was pretty handy with a camera. As the final qualifying session was drawing to a close, Helen was sat above the pits with a camera. Francois was about to leave for his final attempt to clinch pole position. He winked at her closed his visor 
and set off to his destiny. On his fast lap, Severe climbed through the S's, getting slightly offline through the twisty corner and clipping the curbs on the inside of the turn, likely because in adjusting the speed of his entry, the twitchiness of the Tyrrell, and in particular the effect of using third gear, had tightened his line too much. From the inside, the Tyrrell was thrown to the outside of the corner, hitting the barrier on the right at unabated speed before rebounding across the track and hitting the barrier on the left at an angle which split the armco, creating a terribly efficient cutting surface. The car and driver were sliced in half in an accident which was unsurvivable. Jody Schechter and Mike Hellwood were first on the scene and both knew instantly that Francois was dead. Jackie Stewart was one of the last drivers to arrive at the scene and there are conflicting reports of what happened next. Apparently, Schechter prevented him from looking at the terribly damaged body of his friend. Although Stewart has also been quoted as saying he wished he had stayed with Francois for a while, even though he was so obviously dead. When practice resumed, Stewart undertook a handful of laps for two very important reasons. Firstly, to confirm his belief that the accident was caused by instability in the car, resulting from Severe's decision to use third gear through that corner. And secondly, to prevent Tyrrell mechanics from blaming themselves in the belief that something had broken on the car. Once the laps were done, Stewart walked away from Formula One for good after winning three world championships and competing in 99 races. Stewart had actually been planning to retire after the race anyway, but aside from Ken Tyrrell, he had told no one, wanting to spare Helen the horror of a countdown to his last race, at a time when there was no guarantee that a driver leaving the pits would ever return. Stewart believes that Sever would probably have won the World Championship in 1974. His replacement, Jody Schechter, maintained the championship challenge right up until the last race of the season. And there was a general belief that Sever had matured into a much faster, more reliable driver under Stewart's tutoring, and would have been more competitive than Schechter in 1974. Stewart says that he would have stayed with the team to provide advice and guidance as Severe's career progressed. Even after his retirement, Jackie Stewart never stopped campaigning for improved safety in Formula One. But the combination of faster cars running closer to the limits, poor medical and firefighting equipment, and circuits lacking in safety measures meant that more drivers died in World Championship Grand Prix racing in the 70s than any decade before or since. Aside from Stewart's decision to retire, Severe's death affected many drivers. Jody Schechter, the first on the scene, was so shocked by what he saw that he changed from being a wild driver who was involved in many accidents to being a more circumspect racer who avoided risk wherever possible. Emerson Fittipaldi was visibly shocked and unable to speak after returning to the pits, whilst Ronnie Peterson recounted in interviews the effect of seeing his friend's body in pieces in the wreckage of the car. Had he survived, Severe may have been France's first world champion, or he may have struggled without the direct support of Stuart. The manner of his death and the fact that we never got to see what he might have been capable of as a real tragedy of Francois Sever.